So, I mean, that initial figure, 6.9%, seems pretty encouraging, Liam. It does. We'll just rifle through this, Stephen. We haven't got much time before the, the news, and we'll return to this in subsequent hours. Let's have a look at some of the numbers. In December 2022, as the graphic shows, retail sales were up 6.9% on December the year before. That's up from 4.2% year to year in November 2022. And that does look really uh, encouraging. On the other hand, for the full year of 2022, retail sales were up just 3.1%, Stephen. And this is um, volume of retail sales, right? And if you consider that inflation is currently at 10.9%, what that actually adds up to is that the value of retail sales, the actual net worth of what we're buying, the, the, the profits on that to the retailers that go back into the community, they're actually falling. So this is what inflation does. It makes really good headline numbers when you sort of look under the bonnet of them. Actually, they're negative numbers. Yeah. And what about this discounted retailers doing well? I mean, I guess that's just a sign of the times, is it? This is a theme that we've been discussing here on GB News for quite a few months, the fact that the upmarket supermarkets, uh, the likes of, or the mid-market, the Tesco's and the Sainsbury's, which still dominate British retailing, they are losing ground quite rapidly now to the discounters, the Aldi's and the Lidl's. And you don't just need to take it from me, which magazine, of course, a Bible for many consumers, what they've done is they got a basket of 48 goods standardised across the supermarkets and then they costed them. And here, briefly, Stephen, before the news, are the a summary of the results. So Aldi, that basket of 48 goods, was £81.63. Lidl was £83.24. Tesco was £93.24. 42. And Waitrose, of course, uh, the most upmarket Ooh. of the food retailers, that was £112.63. So you see the numbers there. It's worth saying, in fairness, when you looked at a whole shopping basket of goods, Asda actually also came out really well compared to the other major supermarkets. But this is what's happening. People are literally voting with their feet, and it is generally feet because most supermarket shopping is still you know, physical shopping rather than online. And a lot of people now, they're looking for bargains, they're looking to get their weekly shop done for less, so that's why the likes of Aldi, the likes of Lidl are gradually taking market share. What can the, the, the mid-range mid supermarkets, your Tesco's, do about... I mean, people may say, well, they just need to start cutting their prices, but do they have the business structure in place to be able to, to shave that off their margin? They, they do, and they will. I mean, I often talk about the fact that in big parts of the UK economy, there isn't nearly enough competition among the big house builders, among the utility companies, among the banks, I would say... There's a lack of competition in those sectors. One sector where there is real, genuine, cutthroat competition which benefits consumers in the round is food retailing among the big supermarkets. Tesco and Sainsbury's will be watching this very, very closely. They won't want people to go to Aldi and Little because they may stay there mm. when times get better. It's a battle for market share, which is good news for the consumer.